Air is an essential component in power production. Just like humans and campfires, engines need to breathe air, and the more air they get, the better they can perform. In the engines in most trainer aircraft you've flown, the source of that air is pretty simple. It comes from the air outside the aircraft and is introduced to the engine through intakes. Let's look at the Piper Aero again to see an example of this simple form of air induction, what's known as normal aspiration. Think of it as normal breathing. As we fly forward, outside air in the environment moves towards the front of our aircraft. That blue tube pointed forward is the air intake, and it typically has an air filter on the front of it to clean the air before it's introduced to the engine. That air then moves up the intake into the cowling and engine assembly. At this point, this is the same air with the same pressure and temperature as what's outside the aircraft in the general environment. Let's say we're on the ground at sea level, zero MSL. We're at a low power setting, about 12 inches of manifold pressure, because the throttle is closed. Note the valve in the throttle body is restricting the airflow further into the engine. If we open the throttle using the control in the cockpit, the valve opens, allowing that air we've taken from outside to be ducted into the cylinders through an intake manifold. Power is increased to 30 inches with the throttle fully opened. The throttle isn't restricting any air from flowing through the intake manifold, so its pressure is equal to the outside air pressure, also 30 inches. Power is produced in the cylinders, and exhaust gas is ducted through the exhaust manifold and out the exhaust pipe back out into the atmosphere. So three things are true. The engine produces more power when the air is denser. The density of the air in the intake manifold is limited by the density of the air in the general environment, and the air gets less dense as we get higher. So as we climb, the air thins out. Notice the color of the intake air getting lighter, and subsequently, the amount of power we produce gets lower. For every 1,000 feet we climb, we lose about an inch of manifold pressure. By the time we're at 10,000 feet, we're only getting 20 inches of manifold pressure, which might not be enough to sustain a good climb rate. So in the normally aspirated engine, we're limited by the outside air pressure and how much power we can generate. What if there was a way for the engine to breathe the same pressure air it gets at sea level, even when it's up high at altitude? We get the answer if we look to the exhaust air moving through the manifold and being expelled out the aircraft. Rather than just dump all that exhaust gas, we can redirect some of it. We have a wastegate here in the exhaust manifold, which works the same as a throttle body, opening and closing to control airflow through it. On most modern turbo aircraft, like the Turbo Aero 3, this wastegate is controlled automatically by oil pressure. When we close the wastegate a bit, some of that exhaust air is ducted back up into the engine, with the rest still being sent outside via the exhaust pipe. The exhaust air we do keep is going to be passed over a turbine, causing it to spin like a pinwheel. The air then passes into the exhaust pipe to be sent back outside the aircraft with the rest of the air. This turbine is connected by an axle to a compressor inside the intake. When the turbine spins, it turns the compressor as well, pulling more of the intake air in and compressing air molecules tighter together, increasing the density of the air. Notice now the coloration of the air in the intake getting darker. Even though the air intake is still pulling in the same pressure air as what's outside, thanks to the compressor, the engine is able to breathe higher density air, causing the manifold pressure to rise above that 30 inches we encounter at sea level. Now, as we climb, air still gets less dense outside, but the wastegate responds to this by closing further, directing more exhaust gas to the turbine, spinning the compressor faster, and allowing it to compact the thinner outside air into the same dense air the engine is breathing. At a certain point, say 12,000 feet, the wastegate closes completely. All the exhaust gas we produce is ducted to the turbine, so it can't be spun any faster. The further drop in air pressure causes our manifold pressure to finally begin to drop. Even still, we're able to get close to sea level pressure air into the intake manifold, even at high altitudes like 20,000 feet. That altitude where the wastegate closes off and the manifold pressure begins to drop is known as the engine's critical altitude. Let's start an unrestricted climb in our normally aspirated arrow to see how high we can get at full power at a constant airspeed. Beginning from 1500 feet, we see a manifold pressure of about 27 inches with the throttle fully opened. As we climb, we notice a steady drop off both in power on the manifold pressure gauge as well as in our climb rate, shown on the vertical speed indicator as a decrease. As we pass 13,000 feet, we're only able to sustain around a 500 foot per minute climb and our service ceiling won't be much higher than this. Now, in our turbo arrow, we begin the takeoff opening the throttle all the way. You should be careful advancing the throttle on takeoff like this. Notice our manifold pressure is up around 42 inches. 
This amount of power is excessive and can be dangerous for the engine, a condition known as overboost. The overboost is announced by that light coming on along the top of the panel. The Aero 3 requires that we don't run at manifold pressures above 41 inches, but for demonstration, and because there's no danger of breaking the engine in the sim, we're going to keep the throttle at full beans. The turbocharger will have an overboost valve to allow some of the excess exhaust gas to bypass the turbines, but we still have to be cautious of running too high. Now, what we want to notice is that at full throttle and a constant airspeed, our climb rate is much higher than it was in the non-turbo. Also, we don't see the same steady drop in manifold pressure as we climb. In fact, the pressure stays constant. The wastegate is slowly closing to compensate for lower ambient air pressure. We can in fact stay at this high manifold pressure setting until approaching our critical altitude, which is 12,000 feet for the Turbo Aero 3. At that point, the wastegate is closed completely and we begin to notice a drop off in power. As that happens and we drop below 41 inches, the overboost warning light at the top of the panel switches off and we continue to lose power at higher altitudes. We're still able to sustain a very good climb and approaching flight level 200, 20,000 feet, we've only just begun to feed the intake sea level pressure air around 30 inches. The turbocharger allows us to generate more power and climb to higher altitudes where we could take advantage of better winds and true air speeds, cutting down on our cruise time and fuel usage. A few general words of caution that apply to many GA turbocharged aircraft. The turbine and associated axles can rotate in excess of 80,000 times per minute. Such high RPM require the bearings to be supplied with engine oil. Before opening the throttle to take off power and thus spinning up the turbine to those speeds, the engine oil should be brought up to its normal temperature range. Similarly, the turbine needs time to cool down after flight before the engine shut down. If hot oil is left in the bearings after shutdown and not allowed to pass through the oil cooler, it could boil off and leave nasty deposits on the shaft which hurt the turbocharger. As always, look to your aircraft's POH for specific limitations. This video is part of Flight Insight's newest course, Commercial Ground School. Take your flying to the next level and get ready for your commercial checkride with videos on maneuvers, complex operations, regulations, and everything you'll see in the commercial curriculum. Check it out at flight-insight.com commercial.